Tonight is December the 8th, 2019, and I thought I would <coughs> excuse me, make one final video of this uh, modulator that I built, which I've actually uh, changed it back to a uh, just a simple audio amplifier. There were a couple of requests to, uh, to do that. What I did is, uh, let's crank up the crank up the camera here and I'll show you this transformer back here is a triad transformer that I've had for over 50 years and it's a 4.860 known output it's a 10k primary and rated at 50 watts I uh, did put it in there bef uh, before or sometime during uh, putting that uh, that very large transformer in there that 225 250 watt transformer but um, this one's just not going to be big enough for what I want. I'll show you what I'm building here in a minute, and I'm actually progressing on it pretty fast. I don't know what I'm going to do with this one. Um, I will say this. This, th this is subjective, and I, and I generally try to stay away from the uh, subjective. But I did listen to this one without any negative feedback and with the other transformer in it. And the uh, the gain was just absolutely terrifying. At um, w with the mic gain down here, I think you could. I don't know if you. Yeah, you probably can't see it there. Yeah, the mic gain down here at, at nine o'clock. I've I've actually got it disabled right now. It was. Uh, it would just t take you out of the room. I even used. Um, let me get it. I actually even measured the uh, sound pressure level with this uh, general radio sound level meter and uh, it was getting up around 110 dB. It was just unbelievable loud. So I, I don't know what the, what the input voltage was at that time but it was just a few millivolts right now it drives to oh 85 watts or so with 700 millivolts 0.7 volts so what I did is since I'm not going to use this in any kind of uh, RF amplifier modulator AM transmitter I just converted it back to a I guess we'll call it a hi-fi amp I'll show you the uh, uh, the, the scan over here in just a second but I'll show you what it does right now it's actually I still think very beautiful let me turn out some lights oops can't put us in the dark but uh, let's see we got to get enough light on it we can see it and I think I may have gone a little bit too far there yeah that's not gonna work anyway you can see the VR tubes are working. The uh, I got 866s in it. The uh, MV rectifiers are on. And let me show you what it does. I've got about 16 dB of feedback in it. If you ever want to know how much feedback to put into your amplifiers that you're building, what I suggest, I, I thought about disconnecting it and showing you how it works, but I think I can explain it. It's, it's actually pretty simple. Is What you do is you run your amplifier up to some level before clipping. Um, you know, some high level that you expect it to be able to perform at, but like I said, below clipping, and then you start putting in some negative feedback, and in this case, I used 50 watts, and if you put in 10 dB of 50 watts, you will reduce it to 5 watts, and if you put in uh, 3 more dB of attenuation, you'll cut that in half to about 2.5 watts, and 3 more dB, you'll cut two and a half watts into half and you'll come up with about one and a quarter watts which is actually what I have it set at right now I know that sounds incredible but when you do the the decibel math you'll see that that's correct you know 10 dB is a power factor of 10 either increasing 10 times or decreasing by a factor of 10 and then very close to an approximation that every 3 dB is halving the power again so uh, 10 dB cuts it to one tenth. Three more dB cuts that in half. Three more dB cuts that in half. Anyway, it's it's actually not that complicated, and you don't have to have any fancy uh, 
decibel meters or anything. Okay, with all that said, let's get to the point here and then I'll show you what else I'm building. Let's see, let me, um, I'm going to turn the camera around to all of the things that matter here, it seems like, so that you can see it all at once. I realize it, uh, it actually displays quite well to the camera. I've got to uh, put this back to volts. And as I crank up the power right here, there's 19 watts. There's our THD, 0.06%, doing extremely well, as you can see. We're just going to test it. Well, actually, I'm testing it at 100 hertz. You can see over here, I meant to test it in kilohertz. Let's go to a kilohertz. Still got our 19 watts. Actually, it was doing quite well at uh, 100 hertz, wasn't it? 0.2%. And if we turn this thing up and up and up until we get to about 1% just below clipping. I know I'm a little bit in the way of the of everything right now. And I'm keeping the uh, input at 120 volts. We run this thing up to about 1%. That's like that, that's where I like to test it. Things go quite, a, it still it does 83 watts. So it's doing quite well. If you can see... Uh, This display over here, let's turn the camera just ever so slightly. There's its uh, what it looks like. Just below clipping. So it's 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 pretty amazing. I have listened to it. It sounds great to me. That's the comment that, that I want to make about being subjective. Let me turn it down a little bit. Is when I when I ran this thing with uh, absolutely no NFB, which is the way, and you know, maybe I'm stepping out of line here and being a little bit too um, subjective, but when I ran this thing with no negative feedback, the general THD at low power and at high power, all the way up to the 100 plus watt level, was about two to two and a half percent. I think that can be seen clearly in a previous video and I don't know if it was to, if it was that two and a half percent because you couldn't see it on an oscilloscope it on an oscilloscope it just looked beautifully clean but I just didn't like it and, and I have to admit you know I, I don't know how much I'm influenced by knowing what the THD was but I just didn't like it and with the uh, with the feedback in it now it sounds like a monster Hi-Fi amplifier. This thing is rock and roll. Oh, I want to say some, actually some very important uh, things I, I discovered in this. I haven't done too many quad amplifiers. I did do, I did build a, uh, a 300B quad amplifier some time ago. And I went exactly by the uh, UTC W20 schematic. And <clears throat> I've read and I experienced exactly what I read. When you start putting uh, four tubes parallel, now you got two on one side and two on the other, and push-pull configuration, you need to put some space, I suppose, that's the way I look at it, between the screens. You need to put like a 100 ohm resistor to the screens. This is not going to limit the current, it's not going to save the screen in case something goes wrong, it's not going to do any of that kind of stuff. But um, there is just something about uh, limiting the uh, there's something about not tying all those screens together, and the same thing goes for the plates. All these tubes right here, what I added underneath, I don't know if you want to see it or not, it's not very significant. I added 47 ohm resistors in the plate lead underneath of each tube. And it already had 100 ohm resistors, well I had to add them back, 100 ohm resistors in a series with the screens. Somehow it just isn't a good idea to just to wire, straight wire, the screens together and the plates together because it was very unstable. It did some, some of the squirreliest things that I've had to deal with. But once I uh, separated them a little bit with those 47 ohm and 100 ohm resistors, it settled right down. And, and you can see how it performs. And you actually saw how it performed even at 100, 100 hertz. 
I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but I will show you a scan of it here in just a second. So that's what it is, and it is what it is. If you don't use if you don't use NFB, you can practically drive this thing with with a uh, with a, a phono uh, input. Not quite, of course, and you'd need some equalization, some of that RIAA equalization. But the uh, the uh, the gain is just staggering. But when you put some uh, feedback in there, it just settles right down. So that is it, and that is what it is. I'm pleased with it. I don't know what thunderation I'm going to do with it. But I have moved on, and I've decided that I'm just not going to be able to be happy with a two or three hundred watt uh, AM transmitter. And to show you some real progress, take a look at this. This is the new power supply. This big transformer right here came from Sandia Labs, and so did the choke. These are not mounted yet. The, the other components actually are mounted. I have not painted the chassis, and I don't think I'm going to. This is going to be a filter bank. This is going to be a relay to energize the, uh, the transformer. These are 872As. I can't light them up right now, but they, I do have a, a filament transformer underneath. And this is the modulator that's going to replace that one. It's using a pair of 810s. Let's scoop in on it just a little bit because I think it's going to be pretty amazing. It would have been a lot easier to use uh, 813s, but I have a bunch of uh, 810s and I decided to use them because actually that is what this transformer is made for, pushable 810s. And at about 2250 volts or so, you can get 750 watts out of these uh, these two. That's actually what the old Collins KW1 used. So this one's coming along quite nice. It's actually very simple. It has a two separate filament transformer. I don't think you can see from the camera there. They light up each tube separately, so I can measure the cathode current separately and, and balance the tubes. Got some bias adjustments right back here. That's actually left over from the other amplifier. It had that Poseidon board mounted right there, but of course I took it out. The Poseidon board was mounted right here, and I drove a pair of 813s. I published a um, a video on it some time back, some 813 amplifier, but this is going to be an 810 amplifier, and I hope I don't have to turn it <laughs> into a stereo amp. And I'm going to modulate. Uh, I'm going to modulate a Class C 4-400. 4-400 will do a thousand watts input and deliver about 750 watts to the uh, antenna. That's what I had some 40-something years ago, and I'm just going to have to uh, reconstruct it in the old one, the one that I ran back in 1975, back in Huntsville, Alabama. It had a pair of 4-400s instead of the uh, 810s and it plate modulated a uh, 4 400 So I'm going to go back to uh, something very similar to that. I don't think there's anything terribly interesting about looking underneath it, but um, I just decided to abandon it, to abandon this one. And by the way, uh, let's turn it back around here. Let's look at this guy again, because that's probably the last time I'll show it here, I'll post anything about it. Uh, people that want to see a schematic of it, it's uh, very much patterned after um, one in the ARRL handbooks. If you uh, go to the internet and search for 1625 modulator, you'll, you'll pretty well see this guy right here. I mean, it's obviously a little bit different. I'm using a different bias supply transformer, and I'm not going to be using it as I didn't. I don't have a modulation transformer back there. I've got a hi-fi transformer. I gotta tell you a quick story about that transformer. Back when I was about 15 years old, that would have been 1964, I ordered this thing from uh, Allied Electronics and I don't remember if I ordered a Triad or a Thorderson or a Halderson or whatever, but uh, as best I can remember that long ago, I, I knew that uh, <clears throat> 6L6s need 5K plate to plate. And either I made the mistake or I didn't know or they didn't know or whatever, but anyway uh, what I thought I got was a 5K plate to plate. And uh, I don't remember if I ordered a Triad or a, or a Thordeson or a Halderson, like I just said, but they sent me a note and said they did not have the one that I ordered. 
but they sent me the equivalent, and this one is a triad. And I said, okay, and for some idiot reason, I guess because I was a kid, I thought, well, if they just if they did that, then they're not going to make me pay for it. Well, that didn't work out. <laughs> I think the transformer was about eighteen or nineteen dollars with three dollars shipping, so the the thing was a, a staggering twenty one dollars or something. And I didn't know how I was going to do that. I, I didn't know how to pay for it. But anyway, they sent me a bill every month, and I sent them like three dollars a month. And <laughs> in about six months, I paid it off. That's a true story. It's crazy, and it, 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 it don't you wish you could go back there and you know buy the whole factory? Of Macintosh amplifiers and transformers and 300Bs and 845s and oh boy, you know, like that video I made the other day where these uh, MV rectifiers were a dollar and a half a piece and the 816s were a whole dollar. Anyway, that's it right now. That's what I'm going to do with this one is uh, put it on the shelf and go to the big guys, the 872A rectifiers and the uh, 810 modulators and uh, I just can't get enough of this stuff. The darn stuff is so heavy, though. It's getting a little difficult to work on, so I have to be kind of careful. But I'm still having a lot of fun. So you guys will be uh, safe. Don't get electrocuted. And uh, thank you for watching. And always enjoy the, uh, uh, the comments and the communication we have. As usual, I forgot something. So I do want to add this in because I think it's important. This is a scan at 50 watts, uh, and, and you can see that right there. There's the 19.48 volts. Uh, you square that, divide it by 8, and you'll get 50. Well, if it, exactly 20 squared is uh, 400, divided by 8 is 50. So this is at the 50 watt level. And um, here we're, we're scanning it from 30 hertz out to, uh, well, I meant. Uh, I told it to go to 20 kilohertz, but it stopped at 18.9 kilohertz. That's okay. At uh, 30 hertz, it's 2%. Then it drops down at 50 hertz here. It drops down to below a half percent. Drops down below. Uh, it drops down to 1% at uh, at 40 hertz. And it skirts along down here at about 0.1 or 0.2 in the mid range, and then uh, bumps back up to. Uh, just a hair over one percent at 18.9 kilohertz, so it actually does pretty good. Now I know that that you know, ideally some people would say it's not hi-fi if it doesn't go from 20 to 20 kilohertz straight across like a like a Macintosh amplifier. Or so, but uh, it sounds marvelous, and uh, that's a pretty decent scan. We like the 20 to 20 kilohertz scan, but more realistic unless you've got, you know, the, the really high end transformers. Uh, more, reali more realistically, it's about 30 hertz to 15 kilohertz. That's where it should probably be tested. But that is the uh, the scan of the uh, of the quad 1625 amplifier. I did want to show that because I mentioned it in the beginning.